Hello friends, how are you? Well, uh, I hope all of you are doing well, you are staying safe. Um, I have come with uh, a small uh, little entertaining topic uh, in physiology or medicine. I am going to take some short forms and uh, those short forms have some meaning in uh, the normal life and it means something else in physiology. So, let us see some of these short forms. I have written at the start, uh, I have written five short forms. You may recognize most of them for what they are used uh, in normal life. Let us start with the first one. SMS, uh, short messaging service. Yes, the text messaging um, in the cell phones. What is uh, its full form in medicine? Well, it is called stiff man syndrome. Stiff man syndrome. So, uh, what is this stiff man syndrome? It is an autoimmune disease. And uh, in this autoimmune disease, there is deficiency of GABA. Now, you must be aware that the GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain, in the CNS. More than 90% um, of the inhibitory synapses would have GABA in the brain. So, um, look, here is uh, the disease. Glutamate would be converted to GABA by the action of an enzyme called as glutamate decarboxylase, GAD, it is short for GAD. Uh, so, in the autoimmune disease, what happens is anti-GAD antibodies will develop. Now, because of these anti-GAD antibodies, obviously there would be um, no GABA formation. GABA formation would be deficient. And since there is no GABA, um, which is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, therefore, the upper motor neuron's inhibitory influence on the lower motor neuron cannot be exerted. I just repeat once again, GABA, the inhibitory neurotransmitter in the brain or in the CNS, if it is deficient, that means the inhibitory transmission coming from the upper motor neuron on to the lower motor neuron, that also would be defective, def deficient. And as a result of this, since there is no inhibition of the lower motor neuron going to the muscle, this lower motor neuron which is reaching the muscle, it is not getting that inhibitory impulse from the upper motor neuron, from the higher centers. The result is there is excessive activity in the lower motor neuron. Excessive activity, that inhibitory influence is gone and therefore excess activity in the uh, spinal cord motor neurons. This results in hypertonia, excessive tone in the muscles and exaggerated stretch reflexes. So, um, that is the stiff man syndrome. Basically, it is about the hypertonia in the muscles and why there is this hypertonic uh, or rigid muscles is because of deficiency of the GABA. Remember, it is an autoimmune disease. So, that is the first one. Let us take another one, SOS. What is the meaning of SOS in the normal language? SOS, uh, save our souls. Yeah, when, when the uh, ships are sinking or the, uh, uh, there is a distress signal basically sent by the pilots or the captains of the ships, uh, save our souls. In medicine, SOS also is written as uh, 
as and when required one tablet sos is as and when one tablet as and when required well there is one more meaning to the sos one more short form to the sos in physiology and that is sons of seven sons of seven that's sos now what is this sons of seven look in our cell membranes there is a receptor called as gpcr g protein coupled receptor this g protein coupled receptor the receptor that's associated with the g protein so this is the g protein gtp binding protein and there is a receptor which is the g protein coupled receptor it spans the membrane seven times it spans the membrane seven times as you can see here and uh, in a serpentine fashion so it's also called as a serpentine receptor this one because it spans the membrane seven times it has seven transmembrane segments so when a particular ligand or a hormone comes and combines with this receptor it will uh, form a few things first thing is the alpha subunit of this g protein will dissociate from the beta gamma subunits this alpha subunit will move along the membrane and then it will activate an effector protein inside the cell an enzyme adenylyl cyclase enzyme and that will convert the cellular atp into cyclic amp or gtp will be converted into cyclic gmp so these cyclic amp and cyclic gmp the intracellular products which are formed because of the combination of the ligand with that seven transmembrane segments receptor these have been sometimes described as sons of seven sons the kids or sons of seven seven transmembrane segment receptor when hormone combines with that receptor uh, eventually these intracellular products are formed and they can be sometimes sometimes described as the sons of seven let's take one more trp you got any idea what's the normal uh, routine life full form of trp it's related to the television serials uh, television rating points i mean how popular a serial is or how much watched that serial is uh, it's decided uh, based on trp ratings so that's the normal full form of trp what is the full form in uh, physiology or medicine trp in physiology stands for transient receptor potential transient receptor potential this is a category of receptors they are called as it's called as a trp super family these receptors are the sensory receptors at the periphery and um, the the super family is called as trp super family transient receptor potential super family um pain receptors temperature receptors they belong to this family for instance a uh, vanilloid receptor it detects the sensation of pain so it would be described as trp v or v1 or vanilloid receptor basically um temperature receptors like uh, cmr cold and menthol sensitive receptor or the other receptors for temperature sense they also belong to this trp super family the trp in physiology it stands for transient receptor potential which is a super family of receptors uh, generally it includes pain and temperature receptors let's take another one vip 
well very important person okay vip v vip most important person whatever well we are we will stick to vip normally called as very important person in physiology it means vasoactive intestinal polypeptide vasoactive intestinal polypeptide it's a neurotransmitter and this neurotransmitter is released by the neurons of the enteric nervous system you know our digestive tract has an extensive network of neurons the nerve plexuses in the digestive tract that this enteric nervous system its neurons they have a few neurotransmitters the commonest excitatory transmitters would be acetylcholine and substance p which will increase the secretions uh, or motility in the digestive tract and the inhibit most common inhibitory neurotransmitters in the enteric nervous system they are vip and no this vip is vasoactive uh, intestinal polypeptide generally speaking it decreases the motility in the digestive tract and therefore it is deemed to be the inhibitory neurotransmitter though it stimulates uh, some secretions uh, related to the digestive tract for uh, for instance salivary secretion is increased by the vip so uh, the uh, these are the neurotransmitters but uh, we were talking about the vip the normal full form in our day to day life is the very important person but uh, in the digestive tract it would mean what i mentioned just now okay the last one any idea what is it called in the normal life and what is the full form uh in uh, physiology or medicine well uh, this is tough this is tough ag uh stands for attorney general attorney general uh these are the legal advisors or legal representatives of uh, the federal government or central government or union government they are the attorneys they represent the government uh, central government uh, in the supreme courts or the apex courts of the country so they are called as attorney generals so uh what is the full form of this well this was just little tough in physiology actually it would be called 2 ag 2 ag 2 arachidonoyl glycerol arachidonoyl glycerol what is it this 2 ag is an endo cannabinoid we are already aware that uh, there are endogenous opioids in our body endogenous cannabinoids in the body so this is an endo endogenous cannabinoid endo cannabinoid 2 arachidonoyl glycerol um well the other uh, the other uh, endo cannabinoid is anandamide you must be aware uh, the indian viewers that anand literally means bliss and since this was discovered by an indian uh, indian uh, scientist so he gave the name anandamide to this endogenous uh, to another endogenous cannabinoid so uh, as of now we know there are two endogenous cannabinoids 2 ag and anandamide well i was referring to this one its short form uh, i mean uh, the full form is attorney general and otherwise in physiology um to arachidonoyl glycerol so these endogenous cannabinoids they act via cb1 and cb2 type of receptors cannabinoids um the cb1 would mediate the euphoric effect of the cannabinoid cb2 receptors would uh, uh, mediate the analgesic effect of the cannabinoids so the drugs are being developed 
that will specifically target the CB2 receptors um, so as to not have the euphoric effect but produce the analgesic effect of the cannabinoids uh, via these receptors. So this was uh, just a light uh, academic discussion related to some short forms. I will come up with some more short forms and commonly used phraseology in routine life and what it means in the body physiology. So phraseology, physiology will be combined in the next lecture.